your next iPhone may look a little different. That's because Apple is making some big changes and getting ready to fight back. Fighting back against Android, against Facebook, and even fight back against YouTube channels like this one that leak all of their top secret info. Tim? Let me break down Apple's top secret iPhone master plan and tell you why Apple's trying to go from this to this and why doing so might cause them to cancel the iPhone altogether. Every single time I make a video talking about the end of the iPhone, I get comments like this. Everyone thinks this idea is just crazy. And I get it, but also you're wrong. On one hand, the iPhone is a cultural phenomenon. I don't think Steve Jobs really understood just how big of a moment this would be when he introduced that very first model back in 2007, that we did have maybe a little too much fun making one of the first phone calls. Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. No, just kidding. Wrong number, thank you. And one of the most important things about the iPhone is that whether you think it's amazing or it's boring or it's gotten stale, it doesn't really matter because Apple doesn't really care what you think. That's because they keep making money. Lots and lots of money. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars a year just from the iPhone. It's like really thanks to this one product that Apple today is worth like $3 trillion. And that sort of leads to the obvious question, why? If iPhone is making Apple so much money and it's so successful, why would Apple cancel like their biggest product of all time? It's sort of hard for me to explain it in words, so I think it's easier if I just show you. So come with me, let me show you what I mean. Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me on my lack of artistic skills and uh, ability here. So let me just have uh, this tape measure uh, equal uh, Apple here. And then um, for the purposes of us, I'll just do a little stick figure guy. How Apple usually likes to do things is just sort of do things their own way. In fact, they sort of just like to have a straight line from us to them so they can have full control over their ecosystem. And what usually happens, let me get more props here, is with the iPhone, for example, they wanna make the phone the way they wanna do it in their own time frame and get it from them to us in the simplest way possible. But then some things changed and this direct line was sort of broken. And let's just say this is 12 months because Apple usually gave us a new iPhone every 12 months. The next thing that happened was that Apple had some uh, competition that popped up. You had your HTCs, you had your HTCs, you had your Samsungs. The world of Android came about and became competitive enough to influence the iPhone. Apple could no longer just go from here to here and do things how they wanted to. They now had to account for these phones and make little changes throughout the way. Let's get these out of here. You know, these are old phones. Now you've got the new realm of flagships like, uh, give me a second. These days, you've got your uh, competitors like Samsung, you've got Oppo, you've got these flipping folding phones, you've got crazy cameras. Apple now has to not only continue to make the phone they think is best, but they've gotta be influenced by folding phones and they've gotta be influenced by other things and cameras. These days, the landscape is still a little different because not only does Apple have to deliver us a phone from here to there in 12 months, not only do they have to compete with the best that Android has to offer, but now they've gotta compete with a third thing in this mix, which is sort of the book of laws and rules and regulations. Countries are literally throwing the book at Apple, telling them to do things they wouldn't otherwise wanna do. For example, these are things like adding USB-C, which Apple doesn't wanna do, or a side loading of apps, which Apple doesn't want to do. And now they've got to sort of bend to the will of governments to add USB-C and side loading. They've got to make all these concessions to build an iPhone in 12 months. And now it's gotten to the point where all these rules and laws and regulations are coming into play and what Android's doing, Apple's just saying, look, enough is enough. Not only are they now saying that they may not comply with laws that would require them to have a more 
easily accessible and replaceable battery in future iPhone models, but when it comes to the UK and iMessage, instead of giving the government a sort of uh, top secret priority back door for those conversations, they're saying they would just remove iMessage and FaceTime from the UK altogether, which if that happened, would be truly unprecedented. I know it seems crazy and it seems impossible, but with Apple, anything is possible. They are well known for holding a grudge. Just ask Gizmodo. If you know, you know. I mean, look at like the past 12 months and see all the concessions Apple has had to make. They're already putting USB-C on every single iPhone 15 model, which despite what they may say publicly, was certainly not part of their plan. They are not happy about that. And also they're sort of bending to the will of other governments by allowing third-party app stores or sideloading of apps on certain iPhones in certain parts of the world, something that Apple definitely does not want to do but they're sort of being forced to do uh, to comply with these laws and regulations. But with that being said, I still firmly believe that Apple is going to cancel the iPhone. Still think it's gonna happen, but it's not gonna happen because the iPhone is gonna become a flop overnight, but it's gonna happen on their own terms and with the help of this. Vision Pro is not out yet, so I've got my fake Vision Pro on, but you sort of get the idea. This thing, it's gonna be the end of the iPhone. Sounds crazy, but trust me, it's gonna happen. The reason Apple made a nearly $4,000 headset is not because they really believe it's the future of computing. Maybe that's one reason, but it's certainly not the main reason, but it's because Apple understands and recognizes that they are way too dependent on the iPhone. And as the market is super saturated these days and becomes more saturated as all these phones do the exact same thing every single year, the best way for Apple to compete with the iPhone's downfall is to cause it themselves, building this new ecosystem of mixed reality products and new software experiences is gonna let them have total control and sort of, I guess, control in a sense, the actual fall of the iPhone and the rise of their next big thing. As the iPhone has sort of been Apple's crown jewel for nearly two decades now, Apple's hoping that this is going to lead the way. They're hoping that a new storm of accessories and ecosystem experiences and products and apps will revolve around this. And as everyone these days has this, they need something new to buy and something new to sort of hang on to and have as their new shiny piece of tech. And they're hoping that's gonna be this. Think of the hundreds of millions of people around the world that will be buying this for the very first time, that will be buying into Apple's all new augmented virtual reality ecosystem and really understanding that there is a new Apple ecosystem that they can get involved in and uh, one that'll give them new experiences. And I will say as much as it seems like a gimmick, as expensive and as clunky and as weird as these digital eyes are the one thing that I've learned as an Apple fan for many decades is to not bet against them. And yes, we don't know if this is gonna be a hit. This is a very big, expensive, risky gamble. But if Apple can do this and they can pull it off, which they've been known to do in the past, it could set them up for a new generation of users and devices and experiences that could really transform them into an all new era and could be a really big deal. Don't bet against Apple, at least I'm not because they might just prove all the naysayers wrong. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts of the end of the iPhone? Do you think the iPhone's days are numbered? Do you think the iPhone 15 has enough to compete? Do you think all phones sort of look and work the same these days? Are you in on the virtual reality Apple headset thing? Uh, does this look as goofy to you? as it does to me, cause it does sort of look crazy. Let me know down below. Soon we'll be doing uh, videos in Vision Pro and Vision OS soon enough. As always, I'm curious about your thoughts about this. Let me know down below. Let me know if you think this is gonna replace the iPhone. As always, I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle. I'll see you all in the next one.